Good morning, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topic of matter. And this morning, I shall talk about lawlessness in Jamaica. And that is the buzzword because, you know, in recent times, I think it was on Monday that the taxi operators in Jamaica had a strike in which they decided that they would have um, ended their services or terminated their services uh, temporarily until matters um, as regards to a new transportation law or act that has just been passed in the parliament, the Jamaican parliament, had been dealt with. It seemed that these rules or some of these rules were very stringent and the taxi operators were not having it. They thought that or they think that the government should rescind and should uh, exhibit some amount of sympathy with regard to the taxi operators and the rules that were implemented um, in the Jamaican parliament. Now, it is very important that we become a nation of law and order, because at the current moment, Jamaica is a lawless society, and there is no other way to describe it. I do not know if there is any other country in the region in the Caribbean region, uh, um, and also in Latin America, that is as lawless as Jamaica is. It is sickening to see how all people behave. And if you watch some of the interactions between the police and the citizens, it is horrific. It is horrendous to listen to the interchanges between both. I mean, that is something that we should not be demonstrating, exhibiting in the 21st century. No country at all, not only Jamaica, but no country, no civilized country at this moment, at this juncture in the 21st century should be displaying that sort of behavior. The behavior is hostile. And, you know, at sometimes I was wondering if there was going to be some amount of torture uh, from the police to the citizens, because some of the citizens the words that came from their mouths as they hurled them at the policemen who were doing their jobs. Now, I'm not suggesting here that the police were entirely decent, but it was their job to maintain law and order. And Jamaicans have to understand that. I mean, if they're abusing their jobs, I think that we should call them out. But if they are trying to remove, for example, um, a road barricade, Right, because many people decided that they want, some of the taxi operators decided to block the roads. And they are, you know, preventing people from going on their normal businesses. You know, uh, that cannot be permitted in the 21st century. That cannot be permitted because the taxi operators, while they are important, it's just one segment of the Jamaican economy. And you can't uh, allow, you can't, you know, not allow, I should say, citizens who are going to their jobs, who are going to school, right, who are building the economy, who are moving the economy along, you cannot prevent them from doing so. And that is what we're seeing with the tax operators and the level of indecency that we see in Jamaica, not only indecency, but incivility that we see in so-called modern Jamaica. And I don't think we're modern in any sense. When you look at the people and you look at their behaviors, you realize, I see the IMF, the IMF policies right on their faces, the crudity, the roughness on their faces. You understand that we are not being governed well. Now, one of the things about it is that the government of the day, whether it's the PNP or the JLP, They'd like to implement stringent laws, but they are not looking at the core economy over which they have presided since our independence. And I hear people still saying to me, Andrew, you know, it's important that we become a republic. Do you know that a republic means the basic meaning of that is a country of laws, right? It's a lawful country, it's a law-abiding society. It's a country that is strong on laws in which the laws are king. The law is king. 
in Jamaica, there is absolutely no law that is it. We have laws in the book, but they're not properly enforced. And that is why we are this lawless and hostile society where tribes um, inhabit. That is Jamaica today. And we talk about our colonial masters, the British, and we could have maintained, we've had some amount of law and order when the British left the island, right? And we have not maintained those laws. We have not built on those foundations. And now we're crying foul that we have been, we're victims and of slavery and, and colonialism. And yes, we have been victims, but we also have worsened our plight. We ourselves, the black dogs that are now governing us, they are the ones who have worsened the situation while they are the reigning kings and queens over all of these slaves that you find in Jamaica. Because you cannot look at the images coming out of Jamaica and be happy with what you see. Because I don't know if in Haiti it's worse. And Haiti is going through a civil war at the moment. But we have been going through, Jamaica has been going through a civil war since the 1970s, and we have not corrected that, right? And it is getting worse and worse every day. Now think about just some taxi operators. What when, you know, when that strike begins to, you know, um, seep into all, infiltrate, when it begins to infiltrate all segments of the economy, and the population, what is going to happen? And how are the policemen going to execute their jobs? They won't be able to do so because the level of hostility toward leadership and governance and good governance, you can see it registered on the people's faces. We've got to do better. And I don't think that people are concerned about lawlessness. All you want in Jamaica is just names without any substance. So you want to become a republic, but you still want to be a lawless society. Now, if you become a republic tomorrow, it doesn't mean anything because the name has to mean something. It has to be displayed in your behavior, in how the country is governed. And at the moment, as we're suggesting, the country is not a law abiding society, right? And Jamaica is the only time they they abide by the rules or, you know, is when they travel, right? That's the only time that they abide by the rules. It's when they travel abroad and they're forced to do so or be sent back home, right? If you don't abide by the laws, then you will be deported, you'll be sent back home. And you understand that, that the laws abroad are very stringent and they are enforced in Jamaica. You don't care. You think that that is how it should be. And then you begin to, when people talk about Jamaica and they talk negatively about the country, you begin to say, wow, they are unfair and we are the country of Marcus Garvey and we are the country of Bob Warner. Who cares if you are a lawless, a lawless society? Nobody cares. And the images that we see online coming from TikTok, from Instagram, from Facebook, the images are horrific, to say the least. They are repulsive, repugnant images. And we can do better. We can do better. Everything is on full display right now. And the entire world is able to see. And they're wondering, I'm sure, what sort of remote backwaters, backward nation is that, right? But you want to feel as if you are civilized. And when people say that we are uncivilized, when they say that we are comprised of a nation of hostile tribes, then we begin to say, well, no, you know, people should not be that unfair to us. But that is the image, that is the behavior that is on display when people visit the island. And people have cameras, right? Even foreigners have cameras on their phones and, you know, they might have their video cameras also. And they can also take, um, you know, they can make videos about us and our awful behaviors on display. 
it's time now that we begin to understand that we cannot, we have to put some laws in place um, for the taxi operators, the roads, the roads before I end this video. When I looked at the roads and the level of decay, even in half a tree, right there in the center of half a tree where we have the clock, it is not looking good, right? The roads are totally decayed. We have to pave our roads. We have to give the, the country a facelift. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. This is halfway tree now. This is uptown. And uptown to me now looks like downtown. There's no difference between uptown and downtown. Absolutely no difference. And that is the decay, the social and economic decay that we are seeing in so-called modern Jamaica. It is not modern in any sense of the word. It is primitive. Jamaica is primitive. And we've got to understand that it's a primitive, backward and lawless society. We need to get our acts together. We need to get our acts together. We are on display. And the government of the day, they have, even though we're going through the IMF austere program, right? The government of the day, I'm sure, has enough money to pay war roads. And because citizens are paying their taxes, and they're paying high taxes on food and everything, just about everything. And I think, they don't you guys pay also on gas tax or whatever you pay there? The roads should be properly maintained, particularly those that are near our industrial centers. Halfway tree and look at that road where the clock is, where I'm sure visitors move back and forth. Mm -mm. We have to do better. We've got to do better. We've got to do better. Half which tree does not look good. And it's time for us to beautify half which Make it look as if it is a decent, civilized part of Kingston. Isn't it just a block away from New Kingston? Right? And I'm not sure New Kingston is new anymore. Right? Because it looks old and, you know, decayed also. We need to get our acts together. All of this high-rise building going up and you don't have the infrastructure does not look good, right? We've got to really reassess where we are going and what we mean by independence and when we want Republican status, because it will mean nothing if we're just going to be looking like a backward, primitive country, which we are at the moment, and which we have to admit and see how we are going to move ourselves, ourselves and look a little bit more civilized and refined. All right. So these are the little thoughts I have in my mind. I hope that you will respond to the to my pronouncements because we have to really get our act together and stop telling people about oh, don't spread negative information about Jamaica. We if our problems are our problems, we have to do with our problems. And there are just too many problems in Jamaica. There are just too many problems in Jamaica, and we are fast decaying. And we are in very short time, we'll just be like what we see in Haiti, hey, to the level of confusion. And I've told you, many of you want to be occupied, right, by the US or some foreign power they are going to treat you worse, right? So you've got to really be careful what you desire, right? You have got to be careful what you desire because they're going to treat you like the slaves that you merit because we have allowed all governments to have run roughshod, to have it destroyed the entire social and economic fabric on the island that right now we have just a little piece of the pie left. I'm not sure how that piece of pie, how long it will last. I don't think it's going to last for long before the people of Jamaica are going to respond. And it's going to be a violent sort of uprising, which we do not want, something that we should try to avert. But it's, it seems like we are trying to fan the flames of discontent that is on that, right? 
and our people are resenting the politicians and they're resenting all uh what you call it now symbols of legal authority of, of authority all, all symbols of authority are being rejected right whether the policemen the teachers all authorities are being rejected we can't put you like this wake up wake up and understand that we cannot continue like this thank you so much for joining we hope to see you in another video channel